Hi, my name is Autumn Dixon with a balanced saint of mind.com. This week is July 26th through the August through August 1st, and it is Doctrine and Covenants section 84. So this section to me has this really interesting little it's just a couple of verses, but it shares something that is not often spoke about directly in our church. So I'm just going to go ahead and read it, and that's what we're going to talk about. So this is Doctrine and Covenants section 84, and it is verses 22 through 24. And it says, For without this, no man can see the face of God, even the Father, and live. Now this Moses plainly taught to the children of Israel in the wilderness, and sought diligently to sanctify his people that they might behold the face of God. But they hardened their hearts and could not endure his presence. Therefore the Lord in his wrath, for his anger was, anger was kindled against them, swore that they should not enter into his rest while in the wilderness, which rest is the fullness of his glory. We don't often run into scriptures or quotes that teach this doctrine so specifically about entering back into the presence of Heavenly Father sooner than we may think, right? So Moses... This is a big deal. Moses was transfigured and he entered into the presence of God. And when he came back, he worked really hard to try to sanctify his people so that they could have the same experience that he had. Just normal people like you and me, not a prophet. He was trying to teach normal people, <laughs> normal people, how to enter back into the presence of Heavenly Father. I have found, I mean, there's plenty of verses and scripture. There's plenty of verses and quotes about these kinds of things, but I found that they are much less common than how the priesthood leaders normally address this kind of thing, right? So we run into verses like this, but most of the time I have learned that our leaders speak in more broad phrases that can apply to us at any level of spirituality that we may find ourselves at. So for example, President Nelson in a recent general conference quoted, ask the Lord how to open the heavens. Ask the Lord to show you how to open the heavens. That specifically, ask the Lord to show you how to open the heavens. Now, this is a broad phrase. It can mean lots of different things for lots of different people. So for example, you can ask the Lord how to open the heavens so that you can receive revelation about whether you should quit your job or move or whether you should trust somebody, whatever it might be. It can be on that level, but at the same time, asking the Lord how to open the heavens can mean exactly that. Opening the heavens, entertaining angels, brother of Jared experiences. These quotes that our leaders often teach are broader, but every once in a while we run into nuggets like this where it's Moses was teaching his people to sanctify themselves, to try and behold the face of God. Now, my goal in this video is not to give a step-by-step -step guide on how to behold the face of God, <laughs> because not even Moses could get his people to do that, much less me being able to be able to do that. So my goal is not to give you, like, this is what you need to do in order to be ready to enter back into the presence of Heavenly Father. First of all, I haven't had that experience, so I can't give you those steps. Second of all, I wouldn't really be allowed to give you those steps, right? If you think about it, in 2 Nephi chapter 32, Nephi talks about how he is so sad because the Spirit stops his utterance because the people won't understand plain doctrine when it's in front of their face. And that always confused me. <laughs> I didn't really like that because I'm very much a rule follower, and so I would love it if someone could just lay out those steps for me and I can just follow them as perfectly as I am able to. But I have learned that that's not the way to enter back into your presence, into the presence of Heavenly Father. And the only way that I can think of to explain this is through an analogy, right? So let's say that I am able to do that, right? Let's say that I was able to build this set of stairs that entered back into the presence of Heavenly Father. If I wanted to, if I let someone else take those steps up to Heavenly Father, they would probably be destroyed, right? 
And that is because they are not sufficiently prepared to enter into the heaven, into Heavenly Father's presence, right? Heavenly Father doesn't just come down to like anyone because we have to be prepared to have that experience. Climbing steps, right? This is an analogy. Climbing these steps would not be sufficient preparation in order to enter into the presence of Heavenly Father. First of all, all of our steps are going to be different because we all have different strengths and weaknesses. But second of all, it's that process of building the stairs with Christ as your advocate. That is the process that is going to help you be prepared to enter into the presence of Heavenly Father without being destroyed. You can't just climb the steps. You have to build them. You have to learn how to talk to your Heavenly Father, how to hear Him as we have been encouraged over and over lately to do, to learn how to hear Him, how to build the next step, what kind of step we need to build. It is that process that is actually going to be able to prepare us to enter back into the presence of Heavenly Father. So like I said, my point is not to give you this step-by-step -step thing for a myriad of reasons. The point of this video is to give you reasons why you should pick up that hammer and start building those steps, right? And there's lots of reasons why you should do that, but I want to talk about four reasons why you should pick up that hammer and get started. And the first reason is extremely obvious. <laughs> Entering into the presence of Heavenly Father would be an incredible experience in and of itself. Reason number one, super obvious. Being able to have those steps built and entering back into the presence of your Father in Heaven, who you are closer to than you realize, who loves you more than you can comprehend, who you probably love more than you comprehend at this point because we have a veil. That experience would be sublime. There's not really any words that we can use to describe that. Really, all I can do is say, go find a way to feel the Spirit because <laughs> that is the closest that you're going to get at this point in order to feel what it would be like to enter into the presence of your Heavenly Father. So reason number one, very obvious. Reason number two, it's the only way to get back to the presence of your Heavenly Father. I think sometimes as members of the church, we believe that the spirit world is just going to kind of be different, <laughs> that we, because we got baptized, we are just going to die and we're going to be ready to be back in his presence. But that is not how it works whether it starts on this side or the other side, you are going to have to build these steps in order to be ready to enter into the presence of your Father in heaven and to be able to stay there, right? This is a process that everyone is going to have to go through. Learning how to hear your Heavenly Father and how to build these steps, how to purposefully get back to Him. That's something we all have to go through in order to get back to Him. So start building now. <laughs> Reason three, this world is getting a lot scarier and darker and more confusing just as we were, just as it's been prophesied that it would happen, right? The world is getting scarier as we get closer to the second coming. It's getting a lot harder to have a really strong faith. The process of building these stairs will help you work through those doubts, right? So when I was younger, I remember wanting to have those testimony experiences, right? Where you kneel down and you pray about the church or you pray about the Book of Mormon and you just get that warm, fuzzy feeling and there's your testimony. You have it, right? I wanted to have some kind of experience like that where I could look back and be like, my testimony arrived at this moment and I don't have any doubts anymore because I had that experience and now I know the church is true and it's, that's just as simple as it's going to get. But that's not how it works. These little moments, I've probably had like two of those experiences anyway. <laughs> so like, anyway, those were only meant to be steps. They were never meant to be a destination for your testimony. I have recently been speaking with a friend about the gospel and he's very adamant that my church is corrupting me and not helping me actually develop a relationship with my Savior. And when I talked to him, I realized that the bulk of my testimony hasn't come from these small experiences where I prayed about the Book of Mormon. The bulk of my testimony comes from the relationship that I've been able to build with my Heavenly Father 
through this process that I've begun of trying to enter back into his presence as I've built these stairs. I've had experience after experience after experience where I've gotten closer to him. And those experiences have come through the medium of the church and the Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants and all of these things. I feel closer to my Savior and I feel closer to my Heavenly Father through the medium of the church, which leads me to believe <laughs> that I'm on a good path here. I'm doing okay. It's going to be fine. It helps me work through doubts. It helps me work through when I see people who no longer want to be through the church and it makes me question things. I can look back on these stairs I've been building and this process I've been going through. And that is where my testimony is the strongest, is through these steps. It's not through those warm, fuzzy moments that I always turn back to and I always think about those. No, it is through this relationship I've been able to build with my Heavenly Father. Reason number four as to why you should pick up that hammer and begin that prop process on purpose right now is because it increases the quality of your life. It's not just about that final destination where you enter into the presence of Heavenly Father. Well, that will be sublime and wonderful. The entire process of getting there, as difficult as it is sometimes, <laughs> it fills your life with beautiful things, right? I, as I've gone through this process, on purpose of trying to get back to my Heavenly Father as soon as possible. I've been able to clear out so much, I guess clutter is the only way I can think of to describe it. I have learned about what is most important to my Heavenly Father. I've been able to shed misconceptions I have about who He is or how He feels about me. I've been able to examine my own beliefs and realize where things are only partially true or where I have these weird beliefs that I don't know where I picked them up from or places where maybe I was overemphasizing one gospel aspect at the expense of a different gospel aspect, right? Because when those get out of whack, when you're overemphasizing something and underemphasizing another aspect of the gospel, you're still hurting yourself, right? If we're overemphasizing mercy and being like, I'm fine, I don't have to repent, or overemphasizing justice where we're just attacking ourselves all the time, right? As we learn, as we develop our relationship getting closer to Heavenly Father, we are able to put those things in an adequate perspective, in the correct, true perspective. And it is so validating. So when I say validating, what I mean is I used to look to others to help me understand whether I was being a righteous person. I was looking to all these outward, all these outward standards of things that would mark me as righteous. Whereas as I've developed this relationship with my Heavenly Father, it has become much more about my relationship with Him. And it's liberating. <laughs> I don't have to worry about things happening around me. And those things are so contrary. It's so different to be able to have that close relationship with my Heavenly Father and to be able to rely on His view of me and to have Him know me perfectly and be able to tell me what steps I need to live my life more fully and more happily right now. Even though I'm not prepared to be back in His presence at this moment, the process I've been going through has made my life happier. So those are your four reasons. Four reasons to pick up the hammer now. Now, I know I said that I wasn't going to give a step-by-step -step of how to enter into the Presence Heavenly Father. I want to give you two things that you can start with that will help you start your process. The first one starts with the belief in Christ. Now, that sounds so simple, so simple, and we say it all the time, believe in Christ, right? But what does that really mean? What does it look like? How does that manifest in our lives? A belief in Christ. Now, I've received comments and messages sometimes about, oh, I don't have a high calling, or I haven't been a member that long, or I've done all of these things before. Just doubts, doubts that you don't have the ability to enter back into the presence of your Father in heaven. Not in this life, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. When you say those kind of things or you put yourself down or you just think you could never be good enough for that to happen to you in this life, 
essentially what you're really saying, which you're not meaning to say, but what you're really saying is that Christ doesn't have the capacity to change you and to make you good enough to enter into your present, into the presence of your father in heaven in this life. That's what you're truly, truly saying, right? And it was never part of the plan for you to build those stairs by yourself. It's impossible. It wasn't plan A. It wasn't plan B, plan C. It was never part of the plan for you to build those stairs perfectly or to do it by yourself. It has to happen through Christ. That was the only plan, plan of salvation <laughs> right there. It was going to be happening through Christ. And so we have to let go of all these doubts that are holding us down, believing, oh, I could never be good enough to get into the presence of God. You're right. But only when you negate the Savior. The Savior has the ability to help you prepare to enter into the presence of your Heavenly Father sooner than you might think. I truly believe that because I believe in Christ. Second little piece of advice about how to pick up that hammer and get started. Ask a question, a very specific question. In fact, ask the question that President Nelson encouraged us to ask. Kneel down, that's your challenge this week. <laughs> Kneel down and pray very specifically about how to open the heavens. How to open the heavens and receive that next step that you need in order to start making your way back towards him on purpose. Now, this is kind of where I guess my advice ends for this video because your stairs are going to look differently than mine because you have different strengths and weaknesses than mine. The next step has to come from your Heavenly Father, and that's why I encourage you to ask Him, to go to Him. You have to learn how to hear Him in order to be prepared to go back to Him. Don't discourage if you don't feel like you're getting an answer right away. Don't get discouraged if this process is taking way longer than you thought it would. <laughs> Sorry, preaching to the choir here because sometimes I get frustrated that it's taking so long. Even that waiting, the waiting for an answer or waiting for what your next step should be or waiting for how you should move forward, that waiting can be a step in and of itself because it challenges us to trust on the Lord. So don't, don't get discouraged. Start by believing that Christ can make this happen for you and ask how to do it. I testify that you are capable of entering back into the presence of your Father in heaven through the atonement of Jesus Christ. And I testify that it can probably happen sooner than you think it can through the atonement of Jesus Christ. I am so grateful that Heavenly Father has given us the plan of salvation and this process to grow to become like him, this process that brings so much happiness. I'm grateful that he gave us that process. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.